Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you that the meditations of our heart be acceptable unto you. That we be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That let that same mind be in Christ Jesus, be in us. And we just honor you on this day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. Let's journey quickly to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. I'll be reading from the AMC, the Amplified Classic today. John chapter 5. Starting from verse 1. And it reads as thus. Later on there was a Jewish festival, a feast for which Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem a pool near the sheep gate. This pool in the Hebrew is called Bethesda. Having five porches. In these, lay, in these lay a great number of sick folk, some blind, some crippled, and some paralyzed, shriveled up, waiting for the bubbling of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down at appointed seasons into the pool and moved and stirred up the water. Whoever then first after the stirring up of the water, stepped into the water, was cured of whatever disease with which he was afflicted. Verse 5, there was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep-seated, rooted, and lingering disorder for 38 years. When Jesus noticed him lying there, helpless, knowing that he had already been long time in that condition, he said to him, do you want to become well? Do you want to become well? Are you really in earnest about getting well? Verse 7, the invalid answer. The man said with an invalid answer, said, Sir, I have nobody when the water is moving to put me into the pool. But while I'm trying to come into myself, somebody steps down ahead of me. Jesus, verse 8, Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your bed your sleeping pad and walk. And instantly the man became well and recovered his strength and picked up his bed and walked. But that happened on the Sabbath. Today I want to talk about get up and put God's word on it. Get up and put God's word on it. I briefly want to discuss what we had talked about last week and oftentimes we battle in our minds with what we are expecting to what we are experiencing. And if the gap is between what we are experiencing and what we are expecting is great, it destabilizes our minds. Our minds are destabilized because we can't comprehend why we are experiencing something we're not, not expecting based on our faith in God. Once our minds are destabilized, there is this is where we find ourselves being hesitant and stagnated in at a standstill. And somewhere between betwixt uh, the experiences and the expectation, we took our eyes off of God and we talked about put your eyes back on the word of God and the expectations we took we have to make sure that we stay in God's word and put our eyes back on God's word 
and he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Now leading to John chapter 5, first the author is the apostle John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. John is a witness, or excuse me, John's eyewitness of Jesus allow him to write this unique gospel. This gospel's key thoughts are faith and eternal life. John focuses on Jesus' identity and his mission. John begins with the profound proclamation in John 1 and 1 that Jesus is in the beginning the creative word of God who became as a human being to be the light of life to this world. John then proclaims that Jesus is the son of God, full of grace and truth, who was sent from God to finish the work of the father in this world. When Jesus died on the cross and when he, he said it is finished and he closed his eyes. But we thank God it doesn't stop there. He rose from the dead. And he ascended back to the Father. And for that purpose, we can, bear, we can boldly declare that as Jesus is in the heavens, so are we right now in the earth. Every year, there was a season that the angel had came, the appointed time. I want to share with you that there is an appointed time in your life. There's a pointed time that one must live and there's a pointed time that one must die. There is a pointed time that the, uh, the stirring of this water was stirred. And when the angel came, whoever was first put into the water, they were healed from every disease that they had. But unfortunately, this man who was there for 38 long years, and sometimes our living or our lifestyle is a result of our thought process. In the book of, of Exodus, we see that the children of Israel's thinking of disobedience and unbelief caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Jesus said, a man thinketh in his heart, so is, me, so is he. This man was in the same place with the same issue for 38 long years because of his thinking. It is your philosophical belief that governs your behavior. Jesus said, it is not what goes in a man that come, that defiles him, but it what comes out of a man that defiles him. This man had a deep-seated, rooted illness and ailment. He was there for so long that he got comfortable where he was. And although he had a push to go forward, he felt in himself that he can't. It is a person's thinking that will keep them in bondage or is a person thinking that keep them free and whom the son sets free is free indeed. Jesus, a.k.a. the word, came to challenge this man. Jesus saw this man helpless. And one thing I love that Christ, no matter where you are, he will meet you right where you are. That he loves us so much, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what level of rut you're in. It doesn't matter if you're high with your prideful self or if you're low with your humility self. That Jesus will always meet you right where you are. And it reminds me of John chapter 4 where Jesus said, I have a need. I must go into Samaria. Why? Because there was a need of a woman that was there who needed to be free. And I I come to let you know that Jesus meets you right where you are. It doesn't matter what you experience. It doesn't matter what you are thinking or going through in life. Christ Jesus meets you right where you are. And he met this woman at the well and he asked for water. First, it is unusual for Jews to partake with the Samaritans. Why? Because Samaritans are mixed with Jews, meaning that the Jews had 
interracial marriages and interracial relationships and at that time it was forbidden but one thing I love about Jesus full of grace full of truth he comes to break barriers that reminds me of a story when when the woman was came when the men brought the woman here and says what you have us to do this woman was caught in the act of adultery well Moses said we must stone her to death but Jesus said ye without sin cast ye the first stone and they all dropped their stones and had to leave Jesus come no matter what level or what place you are in he comes to meet you right where you are he knows the salvation that we need he knows the thought process that we have and he has the ability being the light being the full of grace and truth to enter into any darkness and set you free from the prison of your mind and Jesus came to challenge this man. It also reminds me of Lazarus. When Lazarus was dead and Jesus went to raise him up to find out what was going on. And Martha met him along the way. And Martha said, if you would have been here, he, would, he wouldn't have died. And Jesus groaned in the spirit. Because how often we forget who God is. How often we forget the miracles that God performed in our life. How often we forget that he delivered you yesterday. Why he can't deliver you today. Thank you Lord. But he, he groaned in the spirit. And he said don't forget that I am the resurrection. The truth and the life. That he is only sleeping. But he will be raised again. And, and Jesus raised him from the dead. Jesus, a.k.a. the word of God, challenged this man. And he said, will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? The man's first excuse that I have no one to put me in the pool when the angel stirs it up. Jesus said, get up. Get up and take up your bed and walk. And Jesus is not concerned with your excuses. All excuses is nailed to the cross. He told him, get up and take up your bed and walk. God is not interested in our excuses. Why? Because every time, every time he asks us to do something, there is an excuse. Every time he wants to hear us, heal us, there is an excuse. But he's there. there's a time when Christ comes into that place, into that place where you feel helpless. And he be your strength. And he said, my strength is perfected in your our weakness. All excuses was nailed to the cross. In 1993, it was reported that a small group of nuns decided to subsidize their convent by opening the downstairs of their facility, formerly an underground detention center used by the communist prison and torture their, to torture their enemies. They wanted to open up as a hotel, and for $33 a night, you can stay in a former prison cell. The proprietors say that they tried to achieve a middle ground between comfort and authenticity in the hotel. It is stated that many people are really looking for just that, a comfortable prison cell. A comfortable prison cell. People like to feel comfortable in the prison of their mind. And this man who was there for 38 long years, he was comfortable in that situation. He was comfortable in that place making excuses. Making excuses where he couldn't have nobody put him in there. But light came. The word came. He came and set him free and told him to get up, take up your bed, and walk. Get up, take up that bed, and walk. I say to us today, get up, take up your bed, and walk. Get up, remove that thing that has made you, a, that, that has been a crutch to you. Get up, remove that thought that keeps you stagnated. No matter what you are experiencing in life, whatever the battles are in your mind, get up. Put God's word on it. And he'll keep your mind in perfect peace. Keep your mind on the word of God. The word of God is a light to every man's path. 
Acts 3 and 6 says Peter and John was in the, on their way to the temple to pray outside the temple gates and there was a man who was sick and lame and could not walk was begging for money and Peter said <clears throat> silver Peter said to him silver and gold I have none but such as I have in the name the authority the power of Jesus Christ rise up and walk and the man then he seized the man's right hand and stood firm and gripped and raised him up at once on his feet and ankles once he raised up his feet and ankles became strong and steady and he with a leap he stood and began to walk and went into the temple with them leaping and praising God Peter said silver and gold I have none but such as I have what do you have do you have a word that'll keep you do you have a word that'll stabilize your mind do you have a word that'll keep your mind in perfect peace what do you have are you leaning on on excuses? Are you leaning on somebody else? Are you leaning on the word of the enemy? Are you leaning on somebody else waiting to pick you up? But the minute we turn ourselves from God and his word, we find ourselves an imbalance and the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, if I don't have nothing but Jesus Christ, that's all that I need. The word is all that I need because it's the word that purifies me. It's the word that sets me free. Get up. Put the word on it. Put God's word on it. Whatever it is, put God's word on it. I may not have the money, but such as I do have, by the power and the authority in Jesus Christ, rise up. Get up out of the rut. Get up out of the rut. Put God's word on your stagnation. Put God's word on your hesitation in life. Transform your mind by God's word. Because that is the only thing that can bring you out of a place for 38 long years. That is the only thing that can set you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. When you put God's word on it, your mind gets strengthened. Your body gets healed and strengthened. When you put God's word on it, your circumstances loses its power because the word of God has been tried and tested and yet the word of God remains faithful. Jesus said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. According to Psalms 18 and 30, it says, as for God, his way is perfect. God's way is perfect. The way that you want to follow is the way of the Lord. His ways is perfect. It says the word of God is tested and tried. He is a shield to all those who take refuge and put their trust in him. The word of God has been tried and tested. One thing you want to do is stand on what has been tried and tested. So what we have to do to stabilize our mind and our lives, we have to stand on God's word who has been tested and tried. If heaven and earth will pass away and his word remains, that means we must stand in his word. Because we know it won't pass away. It has been tried. It has been tried against the most evil, devilish thing, and it still stands. Jesus said, be of good cheer and of courage. Because I already have overcome this world. So you and me have already had the power to overcome this world. It's already done. In Matthew chapter 4, the enemy tried 
the son of the living God. And Jesus came back with the one thing that has been tried and tested. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The word of God has been tried and tested. Let God be true and every man be a liar. It is the word of God that will stand in the midst of any and every adversity. Psalms 1 says, Blessed and prosperous is the man who walks not and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the one who, who don't follow the advice of the ungodly. Blessed and prosperous is the man who don't follow the ungodly's plans and purpose. Blessed and prosperous is the one who do not stand, who, sum, who do not submit themselves in the path of the sinner. Blessed is the one who do not sit and relax or rest where the scornful, the mockers gather. But blessed is the one who delight and desire is the word of the Lord. And his precepts, his instructions, and the teachings of God. He habitually meditates and ponders and study on the word day and night. So blessed is the one who meditates on the word of God day and night. Joshua says 1 and 8, said the book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, that I will meditate on it day and night. And it will make my ways prosperous, and I'll find good success. <clears throat> and it says he shall be like the one who stands on God's word. The one who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. The one who does not relax himself in the scornful place. That person who meditates on God's word day and night, he shall be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water. That shall not be moved, ready to bring forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not fade or wither. And everything he does shall prosper. So blessed and prosperous is the man who meditates on God's word. Blessed and prosperous is the man who keeps the precepts and the teachings of God. That man shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And shall bring forth much fruit in this season. Its leaf shall not fade away or wither. <clears throat> Everything that that man do will prosper. Everything that that man do will prosper. Get up. Put God's word on it. Get up. Out of that stinking thinking. Get up. Out of that attitude of being a victim. Whatever you put God's word on. it, It'll change that frown into a smile. It'll change that I am a victim to I am a victor. It'll change that I can't. To I can do all things through Jesus Christ. That strengthens and empowers me. <clears throat> Get up. I heard clearly the other day. Get up. Get up. He's telling me to tell somebody. Get up. You've been there too long. Get up. That deep-seated, rooted thing, I have set my word to destroy it, to break every chain. Get up! The word is the only thing that can break it. 
by the power of the Holy Ghost, get out in the name of Jesus. Arise, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord, full of grace, full of truth, is here to set you free. Whatever it is, give it to the Lord right now. Every excuse, every deep-seated, rooted thing, give it to the Lord right now. He said, call upon me while I'm near. The Lord is near right now. The water of your season is troubled. The word of God is here. Get up from your stagnated place. Get up from that rut. Get up from that crutch. Get up from people depending on people. Get up. I, the Lord, car is your car, and I change is not. I am the mutable counsel God. I'm forever willing to give you my counsel. Get up in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord say, get up. Enough is enough. I have long time holding my peace. Now I come like a woman in travail. My word is here. My word is here sharper than every two-edged sword. The word of God is alive right now. He's present in your situation. All you got to do is get up and receive the word of God. And the change in your life is broken. You don't have to deal with it from this moment on. That he's here to set the captives free. He's here to deliver you from the prison of your mind. He is here who is light and come into the prison and the darkness of your mind. To deliver you from that lonely, deep-seated, rooted thing in your mind. And take you out to transform you into the marvelous light of his son Jesus Christ. The word of God is here. The spirit of God is right there in your situation. Just lift your hands and surrender unto the Lord right now. For he is present. For he is in the midst of you right now. He is in the presence of you right now. Surrender and give your all to the Lord. Give that crutch or that thing that has made you hesitant and stagnated in life. Give it to him right now. Give him all the excuses that you've been using all these years that prevented you to do what he said for you to do. Give it to him right now. For the time is now for you to get up. And what I love about this scripture was that when Jesus healed this man, it was on the Sabbath. And according to the Pharisees, that was unlawful. But Jesus said, even I am Lord over the Sabbath. There are, every day is a day to get up and start fresh and give it to God. And today is that day to get up and give it to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Get up and put God's word on it. Get up and surrender to God in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. For it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord. Thank you. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He's come right now to set you free. To set every one of your captives free in your mind, in your body, and in your life. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of liberty is right there where you are right now. Just receive him. Just receive him. And allow him to break every chain in your life. Every excuse in your life. Every bad thought process in your life. A man thinketh so is he. He comes to break your thought process. The patterns of your thoughts. The patterns of your thinking. 
that keeps you in a rut for 40 years, that keeps you in a rut for 38 years, that will keep you bound for long periods of time. He's here to set you free right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And to the one that's not saved, you too can have Jesus as your Savior. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou art saved. And that's how simple it is. That's how simple it is that Christ had made it so to receive him. And by way of receiving him, it's only because the Holy Ghost made it to be so. Because one cannot confess Jesus except the Spirit of the Lord reveal who Jesus is. Receive Jesus today. For tomorrow is not promised to us. We don't know if we're going to close our eyes tonight and then not wake up. So receive Jesus today, right now, while there is time. While you confess with your mouth, receive Jesus while you have breath in this immortal, in this mortal body. And confess Jesus, receive him right now. Because hell is real. Hell is real. And he said, I wish that none would perish. But his love is here that you may be saved. So receive him. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God has raised his son Jesus from the dead, and now I am saved. It's just that simple. And for the backslider, the one who, who went back, who knew the Lord and just stopped, Jesus made provisions for you as well. In John, 1 John, it clearly says that if we confess our sins, that Christ is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's all you got to do is confess your stuff. And Jesus is faithful. Mind you, in Revelation, he is called the faithful one. He is called faithful. And in Corinthians, he said, God is faithful. Uh, so all you got to do is confess that God is faithful. After you confess your sins, he's faithful to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It is the blood of Jesus that cleanses every man's unrighteousness. Let's be the glory of God. Get up. Put God's word on it. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.